Let's talk about deities and yeah. what what they are actually like if if non-duality is the true nature of everything and deities are like do do we have our deities are advocates and or are there deities who are our adversaries is there anything in the universe that is manifesting itself as trying to keep us from waking up or is that just all the abyss and and that everything that is god is do you know what i mean yeah. where do deities fall in that and why do people throughout history and religion get so hung up on deities like this is the one true god like <laughs> and, and i'm on my knees and, I, and and like this is the truth of everything is like apollo or something yeah <laughs> so yeah well that feeling that they feel whenever they worship apollo is still very real that's not to take away from the authenticity of their experience because uh ramakrishna had his first experience in samadhi when he was seven and uh he had basically maintained his liberation after uh briefly losing it uh he went down to the ganges and prayed to uh, the divine mother kali like every night at the ganges for three years until he finally did the thing and um, even after he attained supreme liberation, he still worshipped Kali uh, every day. He lived in a Kali temple and worshipped Kali. And that really confused the shit out of me hmm. because I thought, well, if you're like super liberated, why do you need like anything? Why, why aren't you just like levitating in a forest or something? You know, just like be, just becoming nature and just being like, mm. yeah. you know, it's like, well, why why do you need anything? And Ramakrishna was still very engaged in the world. He was still very engaged with the students. I was like, man, I, I wouldn't be like that at all. This is a, a, a while ago that I thought this. Um, but the what the what the deities do is they help us learn that we can imitate and assimilate and innovate that behavior. So that first part of that deity that we do is we find a, a deity that we like and we embody those characteristics in our day-to-day -day life. We can imitate those characteristics. So if you're naturally a very introverted person and you're very shy and you don't have a lot of force behind your speech and you're scared of public speaking or you're just not a very assertive person, but you find yourself in a world that is very assertive and you need to... Uh, 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 you know, put your foot down in life. You'll maybe go to a Kali temple and hear all these hymns and praises to Kali and you'll see uh, Kali uh, naked holding a severed head and feeding the that blood and uh, having a severed arms as a skirt. And you're going to go, holy shit. Okay, cool. And then you can worship Kali and then feel that power and then you can emulate that power and then that'll make you more strong. It, it Kali has nothing to do with the fact that you now feel more powerful, but Kali serves as another reflection of yourself and you realize that what these deities do with this is you can take those attributions and go inwards but then all you need to do afterwards is go inwards and then you can kind of edit your own emotional stance because you realize how fluid and impermanent the self is by the fact that it can just worship a god once and then your personality totally changes kind of like how little kids emulate superheroes mm -hmm. after they see a movie it's the same thing it's yeah. never changed but returning back to that childhood like innocence of imitation is really important because what that does is that breaks the mold of being a jaded adult uh. which is really important so that's why deities are really there because they can help you return back to that purity and it, they can help you be okay shedding that sense of self and embodying a new behavior. But the the failure comes in when people can't separate themselves from the deity and realize the thing experiencing the deity is 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 the witness of all and that is the thing. So there's like uh, ah. the, I think it was in the Tao Te Ching, they said the eternal Tao that can be spoken of as not the eternal Tao. Because if it was really the thing that birthed all creation and was anti-existent, the fact that you're even talking about it means that you're not really talking about it. We can conceptualize it, but it's not something that you can really talk about. So there, a, a lot of the experiences that people have with those deities is still very real. And that's why I still think deities are super important because at first my stance was like, man, fuck all this shit. Fuck LBRPs. Uh, just uh, to hell with <laughs> yeah. absolutely all of this. You just need to sit down and meditate and drag your balls through glass for years like, like I did and like other people did. And then maybe you'll get it. It's like, no, dude, that's ridiculous because I still have a Kali temple that uh, brings so much energy into my life and my room. And I see the way that other people can be really rigid and really just like uptight about stuff. But then I talk about an entity that they're interested in 
and and their whole personality changes. Hmm. They they have a higher degree of openness. They become more compassionate. They become very interested. They drop this like bullshit bravado sense of self. And then they're just really interested in talking about connecting with that deity. People that I would otherwise never be able to get along with. Hey, what's up? This is Josh. And the clip you just heard is from my show, Zeitheist. It's in all the podcast places. You know where to get your podcasts. It's there. It's also on YouTube, which is the best form of it because you get all the video stuff too. Am I going to beg you to subscribe? Am I going to beg you to like it in a da -da -da on the channel? No, I don't give a shit. Do what you want. But if you're interested in the cult, spirituality, meditation, all that stuff, you'd probably benefit from listening to it. So thanks.